Hey everyone, today I want to show you how to set up ERP Next, ERP Next with Docker. And the reason I am doing this is because of course I am one person that believes in simplicity and since uh, this thing has been done already for us, we don't need to keep re-engineering stuff. So I want to show you how easy it is to set up ERP Next with Docker without over-engineering anything. So on this blog post, I have given a detailed step-by-step -step guide and we are actually going to be following it through to set up our ERP Next instance with Docker. So as you can see, there are just three steps. The first step is basically to access your ERP Next. So it's just going to localhost port 8080 and there you go, your ERP Next is running there. The additional operations are the things that you may need. So it's not something that you must do for you to run ERP Next. So let me go ahead and start this. So I'm going to go into my uh, terminal and because I want everything to be new, I'm going to be removing all the containers that I have in my system currently. So if I do Docker uh, images, even the images actually, I'm going to be removing all the images. Let me just apply a sudo here. Yes, of course, I'll give my you uh, I'll give my password and you can see that I have three images running here currently So I want to go ahead and delete those So if I do also docker sudo docker ps you you notice that there are no containers that are running currently so here On the blog post down here on the additional operations There is one operation that you will see that says that it deletes all the uh, Containers it's supposed to be volumes uh, images actually so I'm going to be editing that uh, after this so if I go here and paste this here, it's basically going to delete all my uh, my containers. So if you try to run that again, you see it tells you that there is nothing to be cleared. And now if you do sudo docker images, you notice that there is not a single image into our system. So we have a clean system to start with together and we go through the journey. So how do I start this thing? Let's go back to the blog post. So here. The first thing that you are supposed to do is, of course, to make a directory called ERP Next Docker. You don't have to call it this. You can give it whichever name you want to give uh, your, uh, I mean, your directory. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to navigate to. Uh, by the way, probably I can just do side by side here so that you know I don't have to keep navigating so much. Ah, uh, there you go. And then this other thing. There you go. And then maybe I need more of this because of the font size so that you can see. So I will first of all change my directory to desktop, then builds, and then docker. I have a file here called docker. And if you check inside, I have uh, three other folders. Don't worry about those. We just ignore those. And this is where I'm going to be creating my other directory. And you don't have to do this. You can just place your directory wherever you want to place it. So let me copy this command and bring it here and that is what creates my directory if you got a permission a uh, permission denied error you can just add sudo before the begin uh, before this make directory and you'll be good to go step one is done it's as simple as that step two is creating a docker dot uh, i mean docker compose dot yaml file and then copying some content and saving inside so follow me through and i'll show you how to do this copy this and there is something we didn't do. We created that. We didn't change the directory. So again, let me copy this and get into my directory. Then I'll copy this and put it here. All right. This is going to open a nano editor. There you go. So once we are there, the other thing is paste the, the, the Docker Compose configuration. Copy the um, and paste the configuration file that is here into the Docker Compose uh, .yaml. So if I click on this link, it's going to download the Docker Compose YAML. Open it. Maybe you can open it with your favorite editor. And here, what I'm supposed to do is just to copy the contents of this thing as is and put it into my uh, uh, the, the, the YAML file that we have opened here. But there is something I want to show you. In the event that you want to change the name of your site, you can change it here and here, and that is it. So here, that is on line 70, and on line 102, you change it here. So let me go ahead and actually show you that. So I can see this is site dot local, maybe sample site. Let me do so sample dot site. Again, remember, this is just a name. So you can call it how, however you want to call it. 
so that is the only thing i did i just changed the name of my my site the site that's going to be created so i'm going to copy this now and i'll bring it here and i'll paste it into the file that we opened and then if we go back to here i uh, here the other thing is going to tell us what save and exit so uh, save the changes with control plus o so here control and o and then uh, accept the prompt uh, so accepting the prompt this is the prom the prompt that i am talking about so i just need to click on enter and then the next thing is telling us what and exit the text editor with control and x so again here control and x and we are out of that nano editor and then the next thing is basically to start your happiness containers and this one is just copying this command and pasting it here now something that you need to note if you change the name of your docker compose file to something else then you need to remember to change it here so you give here the name of uh, your docker compose file then you click on enter and your file should be running but if you remember when you were starting we were putting sudo here so you can see this is talking about permission denied ideally because sometimes you need to run sudo uh, commands with uh, i mean docker commands with sudo but if you don't want to keep doing this all the time you can add a docker user inside the sudo as list and you have you don't have to do that so in this event let us just add sudo here and then click on enter again and you notice that something is going on so what is happening here is that um, a docker is creating the relevant containers and then it's going to go ahead and do uh, installations and then after that the only other thing that you are going to do is basically access ERP next so there isn't anything that you are going to be needing to do there so that is how simple it is guys and i would like us to actually wait because you can see here on the blog post i've even given you the instructions on how you are going to log in so basically logging in is basically providing the username which is administrator and the password is admin these are default that are in the file that i showed you but again remember you can change those into in this file but again i don't want to have engineer stuff in this video i just want you to keep these things this thing as simple as i really wished that it remains so ladies and gentlemen let us give this process that is taking place here a little bit of time and then we are going to see how it is going to be i am going to keep it running i am not going to be stopping or anything it will be running there as you watch it and then of course when it's done we are going to again together go ahead and access the erp next instance
so as you can see now it's it started to install frappe so kind of the configurations are almost done so it's, it was it will go ahead now and install frappe then install your next and then we can go ahead and test this system let's give it a couple more minutes and then we are be ready to go So as you can see, um, this is not telling us that uh, this has exited. So I'm just going to go ahead and start try to access that now. And the system tells us to do what? It tells us, tells us to simply go to localhost and then column and 8080. Let's try and see whether we have something there. And voila, here you go. You have your ERP next instance. Again, uh, the default password I mean username is administrator I hope I wrote it right and the password is admin so if we go ahead and click on login and if anything I think I may let me just copy this because I don't know whether I'm I'm writing it properly so let me copy this thing and put it here and I don't think I can miss the the, the spelling of the word admin so there you go ladies, ladies and gentlemen we are in and you can see now here we can go ahead and set up our wizard so just go ahead and pro provide your username i mean my name is karani joffrey and my email is let me actually give uh yeah yeah, yeah. let me use this one actually and then my password And yeah, we can click on next. I don't need to save that. The company is Supersoft Limited. And now I can go ahead and click on finish the setup. So when that is running, you notice that stuff, there are stuff that are happening here. So maybe I could have also kept this side by side uh, till, still. So that's okay. You see that as this is happening, something is happening on our dockerized container here i or rather our dockerized application here let me just put this one here so that we don't have to have issues so give it again like one minute at most yeah actually i didn't even finish saying that before it finished so you saw as this was loading this something happened here actually just check when i refresh this is happening here so that is to tell you that this is actually the application we just installed and if you come here you notice that we have accounting we have buying and selling so we have your app next installed and if you go to help and click on about you notice that we have those two applications installed there so ladies and gentlemen that is how we install ERP next or using docker on linux and that's not only linux even on other os like windows and mac the only thing you need to do is basically how to run different commands and probably here instead of using the terminal probably on windows you use powershell and of course um, 
a mac has a terminal as well so thank you so much for this video in the next video i'm going to show you again on a simplified way how to install a custom app using docker see you there